Welcome back everyone. For this section we're going to be taking a closer look at reflections, how to implement it, all the various properties, and ultimately how to make our own reflections. This will help us implement a better reflection when it comes time to working in our scene. The scene we'll be working in can be found in the scenes research reflection folders called comparison scene reflection starts. Basically it's it's comprised of two spheres and two planes with one light, it's an area light, and two planes that emit lights to our scene. I basically use a lot of scenes like those to do some research on various properties. This allows me to focus only on the given problem instead of working on the full-fledged scene. The scene is called a comparison scene because we'll be looking at the way Manta Ray handles reflections and we'll be implementing our own reflections and see how they compare to each other. Let's take a closer look at this scene, how it's made, what are the materials implemented so far in it. Like I said, we have two planes. They basically have a default scene material along with the spheres. Our light is basically tinted yellow with shadow enabled 50%, there's no specular and an area light with eight samples on each. Our light panels are only constant materials. The first one is tinted yellow with a value of 5. This is a very high value because you want it to look very prominent in the reflection. The second light panel acts like a fill light. It's tinted light blue. Let's do a test render and see how this looks. Right, so this is the test render. It shows the gray colors and how the lights and light panels are interacting with it. Let's begin by adding some shaders to our scene. We'll start off by adding a MIA material, an architectural material, to the first plane. We'll also make the second plane share the same material for now. We'll add another one to the sphere and we'll color it red. We'll do the same with the second material sphere and make it share the same material. Let's do a test render to see how this looks on the default. This is how our scene looks like with the default values from the architectural material. The first thing we'll be looking at is the floor. We're going to be seeing how to implement diffuse reflection. So we we open the render tree for the floor and we'll look at the architectural materials. Basically we're interested in the transparency reflection tab only for now, as the rest doesn't really concern us. Reflection is mainly controlled through this area here. Reflectivity tells the shader the, the overall amount of reflection a surface can have. Currently we're telling it we only need 60% reflection overall. This is the color of the reflection. It tints our reflection color. Glossiness controls how diffuse our reflection is and the samples, how many rays to shoot per pixel to give a better glossy effect. Reflection is also controlled through this area here. This tells basically mentor ray to treat the reflection based on angle. So you have a facing reflectivity and a perpendicular reflectivity. This tells us that the faces that are facing the camera will have a 20% reflection that is 20% out of those 60% and 100% from the 60% for the perpendicular reflectivity. Let's start by increasing the glossiness and introduce 20% percent of glossiness to our scene and let's increase our samples as well 
Uh, we'll do a test render and see how this looks. This is the default effect of the uh, glossiness value by 20%. It does look like a Gaussian blur being applied to all the 12 rays that are being sampled per pixel. It looks very uniform and it doesn't really have a character. So what is the way of adding textures or changing the behavior of the glossiness? We can try playing with the anisotropic value, but this doesn't really change the way glossiness appears. It merely exhibits anisotropic specularity to our material. Anisotropic materials basically work better for uh, hair, for curved surfaces, or cylindrical surfaces. Let's do a test render for this at a point one. Well, that did help a little bit, but it also introduced some kind of noise here. But it's not exactly what we want. We can try rotating it by 90 degrees. See how it looks now. Still not exactly what we want. Anisotropic basically works better for, like I said, curved surfaces. Uh, hair, but definitely not to introduce stretching or distortion to the glossiness value. The first thing people will try after playing with an isotropic node is to try to texture the reflection color. Let's try to do that and see how it looks. We'll first start by implementing a 2D texture node. Any node will do. The cloud texture works better best for us. But in order to see how this looks, we first have to remove reflectivity and pop the cloud to the diffuse color. This way we can have a better visualization how our texture looks like. So this is the cloud node. It's uh, basically between going from gray to slightly darker gray. What we want, we want to add some stretching. And to, uh, to do that, we need to increase our UV remapping values. If we increase this by 120, we're telling the cloud texture to have 120 patterns on the X between 0 and 1. And if we increase the, X, the Z value, that will give us the effect that we want. Not bad. Let's try now adding it to the reflection color and see how it looks. If we add this here to the reflection color, first have to turn this back to 0.6. Let's do a test render. This didn't actually distort our reflection. It merely textured it. Where there is black, there is reflec uh, less reflection, and where there is white, there is more reflection. This is not the effect that you want. Uh, we're still having effects from the anisotropic, so it's better to remove this and see the effect alone, how it is. Alright, let's save this and see some other ways we can implement this cloud texture. Glossiness is controlled by the glossiness value here. So in order to control the distortion of the glossiness, we need to implement this cloud to directly communicate with the glossiness. So remove it from the reflection color and apply it to the reflection glossy. Let's do a test render and see how this looks. Well, that's definitely an improvement. We can clearly see that now our reflection is distorted. Let's increase this by 16 so we can make this look much smoother. 